Hi, my name is Chris, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the top five questions that I've seen people asking about Turner Pinball. So let's get started. One of the first questions I've seen people wondering is, are any of the Deep Root leadership staff going to be involved in Turner Pinball? And the answer to that question is no. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to have leadership from Deep Root be involved in my new company. And so I can definitively say neither Robert nor any of the folks that were in leadership at Deep Root Pinball have any involvement in Turner Pinball. Now that said, there were a lot of talented in engineers and artists and designers that worked at Deep Root Pinball. And I want to leverage some of those relationships because I think it's going to benefit me. And so I have reached out to some of those individual contributors that worked on Deep Root stuff because I enjoyed working with them and they developed a passion for pinball very similar to the way I did while working with Deep Root. And I think having them involved at Turner Pinball is going to benefit me. And so I plan to do that. The next big question that I've seen going around is whether or not John Papaduke is involved in Turner Pinball. And again, the answer to that question is no. Uh, although I had nothing but good experiences with John, I know that uh, the pinball community has different feelings about that. And I do uh, know some of that history. I've read about it. I was not involved in any of that. And um, I, I think that involving John in something that I'm doing is just not the right thing for a lot of reasons. And uh, because of that, um, he's going to have no involvement in Turner Pinball. Another question I've seen is whether or not I'm going to come out and tell the inside scoop about Deep Root. Um, people are kind of wondering when I'm going to do that, if I'm going to do that. And really, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. And I don't know that it benefits me or anyone else for that matter. Um, obviously, I think everybody realizes that things didn't go well there. Um, the, the outcome speaks for itself. And so I don't find any value in rehashing that story. I don't think it benefits anyone that was involved. And so I personally will choose not to do that just because I don't feel comfortable doing it. And uh, I hope you all will understand and respect my decision. All right, and I think one of the biggest questions that I've seen is, what's gonna to happen to Raza? Why is uh, Chris going to the auction and buying all of these machines and all of this stuff? Um, why is he trying to, to buy the IP? And uh, is, is Turner Pinball gonna resurrect Raza? I think those are um, some of the biggest questions that I've seen. And I know that y'all haven't had a lot of information on kind of what my motives are and all this stuff or why I'm going out and doing these things. And, Obviously, when there are gaps in information, they, there's speculation. You're trying to, to fill the gaps, and I, I totally get that, but I want to tell you what I've actually been working on because I think that's going to really help you understand it, and hopefully, you know, you don't need to continue to just speculate about, hey, what, what are his intentions? And so I think the best thing to do is kind of just tell you briefly that when I first started looking into what's happening to the assets of Deep Root after the bankruptcy, that I, I quickly discovered that most of these assets were just evaporating. Um, things weren't being paid for, and because they weren't being paid for, they're getting thrown away. And specifically with the IP, um, that would be cloud services, where most of these files were stored, they're just not paid for. And so when you don't pay for cloud services, they delete all your files. And so by the time I had gotten involved in this, um, most of all that stuff was already gone. And so that is the point where I realized how important the auction was going to be, because really a lot of those physical goods were the only thing that's left of this intangible IP of Deep Root Pinball. And my interest at that point is was trying to protect this from being lost. And so I went to that auction, and as a lot of you all know, I bought um, Raza prototypes, I bought the food truck prototype, I bought a whole pallet rack of the circuit boards. I bought workstations that had CAD files and manuals on assembly and basically as much as I could really find that I felt was going to capture this IP that I felt was being lost. And um, I also made contact with a couple other folks that bought a few of the Whitewoods I didn't get. Um, they got some other CAD files and things. 
And so I'd maintain contact with them so that that can be coordinated together at a later time. And so all of this stuff that I've been working on has been trying to prevent this IP from just evaporating like it was. And so I think that I've gathered as much of that as I can, and I think there's something that can be made of that. And so I've had this idea for a long time, and I've shared this in confidence with a few people from the community and also um, some of these other folks at the auction. And my plan and my hope for this stuff is that I want to release it under some kind of non-commercial use license for homebrewers, because I think that this story of Raza has been uh, just this long saga and not, not a good one. And it spans even beyond Deep Root. And I think it would be good to just have some closure around that machine. Um, I know that there's nothing that's gonna make everybody happy because so many people lost so much over time with this thing. But I think that the, the alternative outcome of this is like, it all just gets thrown away. and. I spent a lot of time on this, my team spent time, the engineers and artists and designers at DeepRoot spent a lot of time, a lot of people spent a lot of money. I just don't think it makes sense to throw all that away. And so I've been working to capture that, I've been coordinating with others to capture that information, and then I'm pursuing the rights to distribute that information. And so hopefully I'll be able to obtain those, and then I will work with a few other people from the community to assemble this stuff into a package and release it for the home brewers to be able to use. And uh, the non-commercial use license is gonna be a free license. Uh, I say non-commercial use, because what I don't want is I don't wanna spend all this time and money and effort in gathering this stuff, and then I release it and someone goes off and starts you know, selling these or doing something. I don't think that's appropriate. And so uh, I kinda wanna main control, maintain control over that, and so it'll be some non-commercial use only license. But Really, out of all the things that could happen with this, I, I personally think it's the best outcome. I think that the folks that I've shared this with have agreed with that sentiment, and I uh, hope that you all agree. And at least now you know that I'm not going out and trying to build these machines, but really my, my motives and, and intent here have been to, to preserve these assets so that they're just not completely lost. All right, and finally, what's gonna happen to the other stuff that's not Raza, the other machines that I acquired, the White Woods, and all of that stuff? Well, I don't have an answer for that yet, so I don't wanna tell you that I do. Um, all I know is I'm starting a pinball company, and you know, is there a possibility that I may leverage some of those things, that I might reuse some of those designs that are kind of the lesser developed things that Deep Root was working on? It's totally a possibility, and um, I, I want to keep that option open, and as soon as I figure out a plan for that, I will certainly let you know. Now, some other things that I've seen people kind of just talking about in general, not necessarily questions, but some people are thinking, oh, you know, why did Chris come out so early and start talking about this? And really, it's because I want to be uh, open about what I'm doing. I I don't think that it's beneficial for me to work behind closed doors. I mean, it, it is gonna be a process going through this, and I think that it will be enjoyable to be able to see what's going on, how I'm approaching different things. And like I said, I might have questions and things for the community. Like, there's a lot of things that I'm curious about. I mean, the Deep Root machines had this really wide display, and I remember trying to work with that display, and sometimes it was difficult because the art and graphics and things drawing on such a wide display, you know, they, they don't look quite right. It's like you have to intentionally fill things in the sides. And then, you know, Stern has these displays that looks like it came off a small laptop. And I don't know, do people like that? I mean, I tend towards more of the style of like kind of the older machines with the DMDs. I, I like that look. I think that's really cool. And I think Deep Root was trying to emulate that somewhat, but maybe somewhere kind of in between what's out there right now is kind of a good balance of things. And so I think as I work through and I try to build these things, I want to show off, hey, look, I mean, this is my design for the back box and get feedback. You know, if everyone loves it, great. You know, if a lot of people are like, oh man, you know, I really like this other display that this other company's using, you should go more towards that. I would be open to modifying that because ultimately, 
I want to make a product that you want because that's the only way my company is going to succeed. So if I have folks that are following along this journey and providing feedback, I have the best chance of success. And so that's my goal. I want people that are interested in following along so that I can share things with you that you might be interested in so that I can ask you questions about what you really want out of a pinball machine, because there are just a lot of choices, right? And they're not necessarily the choices that are like right or wrong, but they are opinion choices and your feedback matters to me. And so that's my goal with this. For those of you that still feel like, hey, I don't wanna see anything from you until you have a game, then you can just pretend my channel doesn't exist. And that's cool. And you know, eventually when I hopefully announce something that says, hey, now I've got something, you can tune in and check things out. But for the rest of you that are interested in actually following along and contributing and uh, just watching this journey as it takes place, uh, I'm excited about that. I want you to participate and uh, I hope that you'll subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.